Hi, this is John Emmanuel for Life of the Noble Sage Art Gallery. I uh, hope you guys uh, weren't missing me too much because I know I wasn't there on Friday. I wasn't feeling well. Um, in fact, I thought I had COVID actually, and so I was in bed and I couldn't uh, get myself up to do the video talk. So sorry if you tuned in there and I wasn't around. Anyway, we are going to press on this week, another week in lockdown. I hope that your mood is good. We have some great work to show you over the next five days of this week. All at five o'clock every single day and entirely free for your enjoyment only. The work we're looking at today is this piece, which is a 2019 piece by an artist called Eccentric O. Obviously that's not his name, his real name is uh, Omar, but he goes as Eccentric O or EO. Um, that's kind of both his tag name as well as a kind of alias, his artist alias. And um, he is an extremely interesting character, someone that I, I love, uh, I love talking about. But uh, let me tell you about how we met. So I was at the Affordable Art Fair with a store showing work when a um, very, very dapper, he's gonna watch this because he's all over Facebook and Instagram. This very dapper, stylish, um, kind of exuberantly dressed guy comes over uh, with an earring, couple of earrings and like, and really fancy hair. And uh, he was really enigmatic, I thought immediately. And he showed me his work on his phone. He's pure Instagram man, like, you know, he's young. I don't know how old is he, like maybe 35 or something, or 36. Um, showed me his Instagram, and I was looking at these images, and I thought, they look really interesting. They were mandalas, and they were very bright, colorful, and um, vibrant, but they also had a spiritual core. And so I, I immediately liked them, and I thought if the work's in person, are even 70% as good as they looked on the phone, it was worth meeting up with him. So he met up with me, I think it was actually here in this room, uh, we sat down, he brought his work, and we just chatted, and I just got back, if I remember right, I just got back from a trip somewhere, I, it may, I don't think it was Ethiopia, but it was somewhere that I'd had this amazing experience, and uh, amazing spiritual experience really, and I was telling him about it, and he started telling me about him and about his journey that he's made. And he's had a, a tough journey and, and a, a, a tough life uh, to some degree. And through it, he's had to push himself. And, and from pushing himself, art emerged, basically. It emerged out of meditation. It emerged out of kind of looking inwards through um, and having this kind of revelatory journey, a revelatory journey. Um, over a few years where, where things were opening up and he was starting to feel like he needed to channel that art, that creativity, that inspiration into artworks so that they could kind of nurture and uh, cultivate inspiration and, and imagination in other people. Uh, young people particularly because he's young, but everyone really. And so that's where he started and the first series of works I showed were uh, in a show called Tradition and Divergence in India. And it had him in, it was a big group show, and he did really well with some mandalas, which are gorgeous mandalas. And naturally, mandalas are really interesting to him because they're very stylistic, very, uh, they can be brightly colored, and he was merging graffiti art and street art into that, using aerosol cans and um, engraving, um, uh, you know, digital engraving and all kinds of things. And it was really interesting. They did really well, so I immediately got him involved in my last show, one of my last shows, The Spiritual, where he was alongside Prafula Mahanti, um, and, uh, um, and I've forgotten who else, it was Prafula Mahanti, uh, Eccentrico, oh yeah, and Priyanka Vera Surya from Sri Lanka. And so he was suddenly, I wanted to put him aside uh, next to the, this heavyweight artist Prafula because they had something really deeply in common. And that was that spiritual force to their work. They were be believing in the strength of art to be uh, nourishing for the viewer and, and, and cultivate like greater awareness and connectivity. Anyway, um, he did really well in that show and uh, I, uh, in that last show. And this is one of the works from that show. This is called the Manuscript Series. It's a 2019 work. And as you might, I'm sure you'll be able to tell even from there, he used a silver leaf to create this reflectivity in the work. 
And naturally, the silver leaf, even before you start analysing this work, the silver leaf is doing things, connotations with you of, uh, of um, opulence and, um, and richness and such like that. So he uses gold and silver leaf in that way, sometimes bronze leaf as well. Actual leaf, silver leaf. And then you've got the content. Look at what you've got. You've got these, you've got a uh, vertical format, and the vertical format creates an elongated kind of sense uh, composition. These strips here, three strips really, very symmetrical with a border around it. We immediately are starting to be moved towards, um, moved towards kind of maybe textiles, rugs, carpets, um, into that craft, that kind of area. And we also, when we're combining it with some of these designs, we, we think of the Orient, we think of uh, Southeast Asia. Here, when we look at the calligraphy in the script, which doesn't say anything, in, 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 I should know, it doesn't say anything. It's this calligraphy in script is bringing together Urdu, Sanskrit, um, Arabic, uh, Hebrew and other and other uh, scripts of other languages, which he which he studies deeply, and kind of it bring, brings about his own kind of language that he puts into his work. So when you combine this, the color, the silver leaf, the borders, um, the uh, the strips, the elongated nature, we've got this feeling of age. We've got this feeling of something being antique maybe you're looking to the past and yet the color the bright color and the the, the technique um is very uh very well, kind of very street very graffiti art inspired and that's what he's about so he's kind of bringing the old and the young together even the best example of that is this in the center here is a is his own signature eo e o and it's on its side and you can see it all along the edge as well, E-O, E-O. That's his name, Eccentric O. He, this symbol came to him in a dream. It came to him as a, as a symbol because standing upright like that, it looks like a flower. On its side, it looks like a key. And then, uh, obviously, it's also his initials, E-O, Eccentric O. So it came to him as a, in a dream as kind of a, uh, a symbol that must be in all of his works. But from stepping back from it, I, I noted when I was looking at it that it's kind of like a graffiti tag, but on a very high art, fine art level. The way he puts it right in the middle, he's not trying to put it right to the edge, he's putting it right in the middle because he wants to be that portal of inspiration and creativity for the viewer. That's what he wants people to gain from it. He wants people to absorb that and come away from it feeling even better than when they came to it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, is that about 10 minutes? Okay, that's about 10 minutes. I hope you really enjoyed it today. Um, I'm going to leave you with this work, just to have a look at it in, uh, for, a little, for a few moments. And um, I hope you'll join me tomorrow at 5 o'clock for another Noble Sage Tea Time TV. See you then.